go. All right, we'll get started. We'd like to welcome 2014 Hero World Challenge champion Jordan Spieth to the interview room. Uh, Jordan, if we could just get an opening comment from you ahead of your uh, seventh start here at Albany. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, glad to be back. It's a, it's an elite field, a small field, but an elite field where it's a really good time to work on, you know, things in the off season if you've needed to work on things. And if not, it's a great opportunity to test your game, trying to get into contention. And and um, uh, it, it did really good things for me, winning this event into the next year, uh, gets you a lot of confidence as you head into the new season. And, and now it really is a new season. So um, I don't want to use the word tune-up, but it's a, it's a very competitive, elite, um, small field tournament where you have an opportunity to, I think, do some really good things for the next year. Making your first start uh, since the Ryder Cup, first in an individual event since the Tour Championship, uh, how would you assess the state of your game coming into this week? I feel pretty good. I, after the Ryder Cup, I went home, and a week later, I, I'm, um, I injured my wrist again, as I did in May, and I was out for another couple weeks, and I finally got to the bottom of everything. And so I've had really good physical therapists and um, had to add that into my routine over the last couple months and will continue to, but um, essentially got to the bottom of it and, and was able to get in some really good work, although maybe not as much as I would have liked to, um, but have structurally gotten things in a place that are as good as they've been in a long time and um, had a, a couple good days with my coach here, came here early and um, was able to have him available. And uh, so I feel, I feel really good. I feel very optimistic about where my game is at and, and will continue to, to, to head over the course of the next couple months as we head into a really busy, call it early February through August. All right, we'll take some questions out here. If you have a question, we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, we'll start over here with Swami. Hi, Jordan. It's almost 10 years since you flew in red eye from Australia to come and to Orlando and shoot that amazingly good score, 2,600, I think. So, like, has it been such a long time? And that win kind of propelled you into global spotlight, the majors coming in after that, and so much else. So how do you describe these 10 years as? How Sorry? would you describe this journey of 10 years, you know, from yeah. the time when you first came here? Yeah. Um, how much time do we have? Um, that, was, uh, that was fun. I was 21, so I don't think flying across the world and playing a few days later was that big of a deal, to be honest. Um, but it was, a, it was a cool two-week stretch of Australia, and then at the Hero World Challenge, it... It's uh, Isleworth, and that's probably that Isleworth week. I would say is I put that up there as maybe the best golf I've ever played in my life. I don't think I've ever played better for four days than I did there. Um, I still think about how it felt swinging the club that week, and just how the ball was coming off, and how easy the game was. Um, and it's what you strive for every week. But um, I've yet to match the way it felt that week. Uh, but yeah, it did a lot of good for the next season. Um, most importantly, you know, I had won in 2013 and I didn't win on the PGA Tour in 2014. But then with those two wins, it really felt like I actually improved off the previous year and I kind of got a little confidence boost into, okay, I, I, I do remember how to win. I know how to win and I'm going to go try and take this into the next season. So um, it seemed that easy then. Um, there's been times where it's been that easy and times where it hasn't. And um, I feel really optimistic about, you know, being able to get myself in position as often as, as I've, I feel that I should and, uh, and close out more and more tournaments. I come off a winless year this year unless I'm lucky enough to do so this week. But I felt like I played well enough to win a couple times, even better than when I maybe did win um, at, at, at other events. It's just the way, the way it goes. I also think with these elevated events now, it's going to be harder and harder to have a lot of wins because you're playing against better competition every week. So um, elevating your game to to the field and to the tournaments is going to be, you know, key as we head into this season. Mark in front. Uh, Jordan, on the wrist, was it a mechanical thing? Was it just wearing and tear? No, nerve? It's a, it ended up being a nerve thing, which is nice because I wasn't doing anything either time that I heard it that should have caused what happened. And both MRIs were very similar and shouldn't have been in the pain and lack of um, mobility that I had uh, initially after it happened that it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense off the MRIs and so then 
just did a bunch of tests and some work and turns out it was uh, my ulnar nerve, which is not anything to mess with. So I've been trying to take it very, very carefully. Thank you. We'll go to Dylan. Thank you. Um, Jordan, what went into the decision to join the policy board and, and fill Rory's spot? Uh, I've been pretty involved since June um, in a lot of stuff going on. And so I didn't, doesn't really change a whole lot of what I've been involved in other than kind of officially being able to know, be in the know a little bit more. And I thought um, the other player directors and a lot of other players had the, you know, pretty much um, had the confidence for me to, to kind of be the guy to help be that, that six vote, that majority on the board um, to help see through what the next at least few months looks like. And, um, and then for me, it's nice because it's not a full term, which I had said that um, I wasn't interested in for the time being, uh, given two little ones now and trying to get my game where I want it. Um, but I think that this is a pivotal, pivotal moment in time for professional golf and the PGA Tour, and I felt like I could be of, of help. And I don't know how much detail you can get into, but what, what have you been doing? I've heard that you've been very involved behind the scenes. What have you been working towards, and uh, what's kind of the general update on how things are going? I think uh, the easy answer is playing a bit of catch-up on what I've, what I've missed, and it's going extremely well. Um, there's nothing but optimism amongst the player directors, and collectively um, we feel that we're going to get something done that's great for our tour and uh, hopefully done um, by the same deadline that we've been trying to. Paul? Uh, just right here. Uh, back to the uh, wrist thing just quickly. Uh, is that something you just have to manage rest? Is, is that something that can be solved over time, or you just got to take it easy? It's kind of a little bit of a combination. Like as long as I'm on top of it treating kind of where the – it's kind of, you know, all through – um, kind of neck, chest, over and down. So it's loosening things up. It's not really a rest or an ice thing. There's not, it's not an inflammation thing, which is how I treated it in May, thinking it was an acute injury to the wrist. Um, it's more use it, but don't overuse it, listen to it. Uh, but I've been, I've been at full practice for weeks now, and um, here or there when I feel like it gets close to being overdone, gym, practice, combination of a day, then I, I stay off of it. But I have no um, reservations on my uh, abilities to just do what I need to do going forward, given the progress that's been made over the last month and a half. And as you've worked on your swing and getting your game back to kind of the spot that you want it, I mean, you just mentioned that feeling you had at Isleworth and wanting to get back to that. When you look at your swing and how you're tinkering and working with things, how much are you looking back and looking at old video, but also, you know, understanding that maybe your body's different, things are different, it's never going to get back to that? How do you strike right. that balance? No, it's a, it's a very good point. It's exactly, it's exactly what we talk about. There are wrist positions, timing, elements, um, where you do want to look back and say, this was a weapon for me when I set the club this way, not in this exact space. Um, because as you mentioned, you know, my body's very different from when it was when I was 21. So it's, it's kind of, it ends up being a blend of good time periods. You start seeing some similarities to, you know, call it 2017 time frame, um, and then uh, you start seeing some similarities to kind of 13, 15 and even earlier into 13, 12, some of my DNA stuff. And honestly, I think a lot of this getting on top of my hand, I don't think I recognized how limited um, or unable I was to hold certain forearm and wrist positions for a while when I originally injured it in 2018 until recently when I've been on top of it and have actually started to, for the first time in a long time, match um, swings that, uh, or at least positions that I'm trying to hit and how they feel to me and what they produce um, when I start to do them over and over again. Is that fully there this week? No. Is it very, very close? Am I doing it? on the majority of swings, yes, and it's extremely exciting. And it makes me think, you know, um, staying on top of this, uh, I, can, I can get 
to, to structurally doing what I need to be doing to be at my best. Dave in the second row. Was your risk ever 100% after that first incident in May? It got to where I, I would have said yes. Um, took till probably July. Um, took about six, eight weeks. Um, but I, I was very shocked um, when I re-injured it. I was reaching for a toaster to make my son breakfast, and I was just supporting it on the shelf. It made, in other words, everything was, it, it took the fall for other things that were off. Um, and I, I, it just made no sense because I'm like, what's going to prevent this from happening at any other point in time? And now I'm out two plus weeks, you know? So I feel good about that it, it not being the case going forward. That's a big piece of toast. Uh, yeah. How's the baby? The toast wasn't even in the toaster. How's the baby? Great. Yeah, we're, we're two under two for a while. Our son turned two a couple weeks ago. Oh. And um, we're having a lot of fun, but it's, it's, it's hard work. It's the most rewarding work, but it's hard work. Um, just wanted to ask you real quickly about Ryder Cup and, you know, sort of the postscript, the aftermath when you look back on that week. I mean, um, you know, Europeans played great. You guys probably weren't a 100%. What do you take away from the week, and what do you hope to maybe do differently other than play better? Yeah, pretty much that. Um, I think I said it in in the press conference right afterwards, and – um, they came in sharp. They had, they were playing well. Uh, they all fin- they all played well at Wentworth. They came in and got off to a four zero start at home, and that's a hard hole to climb back from when they have not only um, players that are playing really good golf, but also the momentum out there and the whole crowd behind them, and um, made it close to a match with a lot of guys having less than their best stuff. Um, and the question becomes, how do you how do you have your best stuff and We've started to talk about and explore ways to um, where the dates are, getting guys to play an event sooner, um, getting over there earlier, uh, just a, some, some little things that may have just, you know, made the, that first day go a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but it wasn't from a lack of wanting it. It wasn't from preparation at the course, and it wasn't from any kind of pairings or captaincy or, I mean, we got outplayed. Joy, hi, Dave. Jordan, uh, we were speaking to Rory in Dubai, and, and a couple of things that he said why he was stepping down was because he has a young family. Yours is younger, younger still. And, and the inordinate hours that he had to spend on phone. Uh, did you have any discussions with him? What kind of, I mean, like, you know, what kind of talks did you have with Rory? himself before taking up this position not not since he um resigned and but i mean it's been a collective conversation amongst 2025 20, to 125 guys for the last bunch of months so he's been we've been on calls together um probably talked to each other individually but nothing it hadn't been in recently uh but i i totally understand it um he did Two years. I only got to do. I'm only stepping in to do his last, um, and you know, I feel like he's he's taken taken the um, you know some hits for trying to trying to look out for the PGA Tour, and um, I think he feels proud of what he did. I would imagine, and uh, feels like good things are going to happen, which I wholeheartedly believe, and. For me, if it requires, you know, a little bit more time and, and that takes away from time other places temporarily, seems like a very important time to, to do so right now. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't the one that was on all those hours of phone calls, so I'll, I'll kind of take, take a little bit more now um, that, that he was doing the majority of um, in the last year in the last year or so. We'll go to Rex and then Brody. Jordan, just out of curiosity, who called you to ask you to take Rory's spot? Uh, honestly, like nobody. Um, I kind of had been on the phone with a number of the guys anyways and was, you know, pretty involved. And it, it was my idea that I brought up to um, the player directors. I, I believe I was on the phone with Patrick talking about some stuff and said, 
I'm happy to step in if you guys, if that's what you guys want, and you guys, if you guys want me or in the rest of the, the tour you think would would support that, then I'm happy to step in for for right now and um, considering uh, it wasn't it wasn't all new to me. I just certain conversations, certain information you can't have unless you're a board member, and so um, I didn't have that, but. I had a pretty good gist of where the timetables are and um, and how things are, are moving along. And, and so now it's been kind of catch up on the details. And then Tiger was just in here talking about his frustration. That's the word he used for June 6th. That's the fact the agreement came out and players didn't have any input on it. And I think his line was, it can happen again. Do you share that same frustration? And how do you keep it as a player and a player director now from happening again? Oh, I don't think it can happen again with what, um, <clears throat> with kind of what's happened since then. The moves that have been made and, you know, where the governance structure of the tour is, I don't think it can um, again. And uh, sure, I think is the easy answer. Yeah, I think collect, I think if you polled players, they probably, frust frustrating or um, a little confused to start would be probably the words that would come up. Um, but I think we'll, I think we'll end up in a better place than we've ever been. Um, and hopefully that's, we're able to see that soon. Brody in the back. Jordan, I mean, I know you just joined the board, but still, I mean, in general, what have you seen from Tiger in terms of kind of using his influence lately to kind of steer the game where he thinks it should go? He's honestly, he's, I mean, what he's done for us prior to any of this, is can't be um, overstated, but it, it is really cool that he's spending the time and the effort um, that he has been almost, um, you know, I know he doesn't sleep a lot, but he's spending most of his waking hours thinking about how to better the PGA Tour for the players, and he doesn't have to do that. Um, he could ride off into the sunset if he wants. We know that's not his personality. But um, it is really, really cool uh, that he's wanted to step up and take the role that he has. And to answer your question, what is he – I mean, he's not stepping in to throw influence anywhere. It just comes with him when he walks in the door. Um, he's, a, he's a listener, and he has a lot of experience. He's seen, you know, the PGA Tour go through a lot of different changes over – almost or almost 30 years for him now um and he comes with that kind of perspective as well as um somehow a way of recognizing what what's what can be good for the pga tour and its entire membership when he's never been an order ordinary member um but it doesn't seem lost on him we'll go to ewan on the right jordan the the, the player impact program has generated a lot of discussion again as it does every year um where do you sit on, on what that pays for, for what it is? Because that's what people seem to talk about a lot. I mean, um, I, think that, I think that its goal was to help prevent players from accepting high-dollar Saudi offers or live offers. Um, I think that its goal, if you're going to see numbers that – are thrown out at players now, a couple specific players. It doesn't really do that. Um, and I think that unanimous, I mean, I think it was pretty unanimous, including those of us that have significantly benefited from it, to taper it down and find a way to, to spread those funds elsewhere to support, ideally, fields, uh, um, purses, so that you still could benefit from them individually, um, but finding the right... Finding, finding the right sweet spot, um, and I'm not sure. I know it drops by half next year. I'm not sure what that will look like after that. Hopefully it, hopefully it won't need to exist, um, I think, is the best way to put it, and I think that makes everybody happy, um, including those that have benefited from it, because there will be other ways to benefit from performance and, and just being a, a big brand for the PGA Tour. Bob, and then Martin. Right here, Jordan. Sorry. Um, I guess first, do you, 
do you want it to work out with the PIF? And, and either way, whether it's them or the private equity that firms that have been discussed, do you have a vision for what the new company will look like? Or do, or do you have a wish for what that might look like? I think that I'm not entirely sure yet on either question because it would depend on how it looks like on your first question a lot. Um, there would have to be some uh, there's some kind of like non-negotiables that I think the players of the PGA Tour should have and I'm not sure that 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 could be met um, with PIF, and maybe it could, and, and I'm not sure. I think it's going to come down to what the players want. Um, me giving an opinion is not my job. Um, as uh, it, If you're just asking me a regular question, I can give you my opinion elsewhere, but if you're asking me as a, as a player director, that's not my job to answer. But uh, second part was, do I, what, do I see what would my vision be ideally? I think there's, I don't think that that's, there's one answer to that either. Um, I think that there are options that I think could be super beneficial, but I don't know if, I don't know if they're possible. Um, but what I do know that doesn't answer your question, but gets me out of your question, is that <laughs> I feel that um, the, the player directors plan to be totally united in having the rest of the membership at the forefront of their mind in any decision that's made that makes it the best possible deal for the players that it can be. And I know that um, given there are op quite a few options, um, that's a good thing because it means that um, people want to be a part of what we have. And so we should be able to to make that very useful for us. We have time for two more questions. We'll go to Martin on the right. Over Jordan, here. when Tiger was in, he was asked about not his name being mentioned as a possible Ryder Cup captain in 2025. He says now's not the time to be thinking about that. No, the, the focus has to be on the talks around the, the, the framework agreement. As a player, first and foremost, do you concur with that view? Uh, yes, because it's so it's far enough away, I think... Um, Yes, I think first and foremost, the fact that his mind's on on that is probably best. And uh, and because of how deep he dives into everything he does, he's just not going to want to. He's not going to want to do something unless he can put his entirety into it. And uh, I don't think he'd be able to um, think about that right now and wonder what that would look like. But I believe that there's a chance that it can all get done. And you know. It'd be a dream to play for him as a captain. Um, I wasn't able to in Australia and make that team, and um, so I'd, I'd love to do it someday. And him putting everything into that um, would be pretty awesome to watch. Okay. And our last question from Matt in the middle. Jordan, you mentioned this being your last event this year. Just kind of wondering what the next month or so looks like to prep for Century. What are you planning to do, and how are you spending the time? I'm uh, – I'm going to be home. I'm going to pray for good weather in Dallas. It's hit and miss in December. It looks pretty good right now for the foreseeable future, but I feel I've been feeling healthy. Um, I've been feeling really, really optimistic about some of the stuff that we've been doing, and um, so I plan to push it. Um, and then looks like I'll have a little break after Century as well, So, but then go really heavy after that. So it's kind of a try and get things ready for century, but then I also have a good amount of time there after where um, if you really want to start, start, start peaking consistently, um, you know, I hope to get things exactly where I want them by January 1st, but if it's by, you know, January 15th, that would be, that would be great too. All right, Jordan, thank you very much for your time and best Thanks, of luck guys. this week. Appreciate it. We've got Colin at 1230.